Welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Letitia Nesby. On today's segment, we're going to be talking about families reconnecting military families. The men and women of the military aren't serving alone. Their families are serving with them. That's over 2.5 million families. Put another way, that's over 5 million of your neighbors who are dealing with issues a civilians can't even imagine. Here today to discuss reconnecting mil military families is Heather Ely. Hi. Chief Executive Officer, Officer of Project Sanctuary. Heather, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and Project Sanctuary. Okay. I am a civilian who took a left turn in life. I'm a registered nurse. And during the first Gulf War, I recognized that our military families weren't getting all the support and services that I thought that they needed. Mm -hmm. uh, so you fast forward to 9-11, and I knew I needed to do something. I didn't know what I needed to do, but I reached back into our communities. I talked to some veterans and asked, how can I help? How can I serve? With that being said, speaking of military families, what is the biggest hurdle uh, and re that families and returning veterans are facing today? I think probably the biggest hurdle is just a general misconception. Okay. You see the video on TV of dad being welcomed home and you know they may be popping out of a box or he's in a school auditorium. And I think the general public thinks that that's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. They don't recognize that that can be the beginning right. of a lot of transition and a lot of heartache. So military families need continuous support from our communities and from organizations so that they can reintegrate back into our communities. Many civilians are familiar with PTSD, but let's talk about it as it applies to service members and their families. What exactly is PTSD? So post-traumatic stress disorder is a disorder. It's an injury. When something horrific happens, mm -hmm. your brain doesn't really know how to process it. Okay. And so instead of being just filed away into your memory bank, it sort of floats around the top of your brain is the easiest way for me to explain it. Mm -hmm. And it can be triggered. And these memories sometimes can pop out and can be debilitating um, and can often lead to the service member feeling like he doesn't really fit back into reality. Okay. In addition to PTSD, Heather, tell us about TBI. So TBI is the other signature injury of this war. Uh, a lot of times on the news you may hear about IEDs mm -hmm. or roadside explosions. And generally a TBI is when the brain gets shook. It gets bruised, it gets rattled. Um, the effects can last short term, a uh, mild concussion, or it could last for years with light sensitivity, headaches. Wow. How does that statistic and those uh, epidemics, how does that affect those here in Colorado being such a big military state? It's hard. Um, when you start paying attention to your neighbors and to your families and to your friends, uh, if you know anyone in the military, you know, reach out. The suicide rate for a veteran can be anywhere from 22 a day up to 50 a day. Um, it's hard to determine exactly what that number is. And that's not counting the spouses and the kids also. So reaching out, asking someone how you can help, just letting people know that you care. Well, in the military, we, the suicide epidemic, we hear about PTSD on television. How does that uh, talk, how does that affect deployment? Does deployment have to do anything with that and how many times people are deployed or away from their families? You know, deployment, the more times you deploy, the greater chance you have of coming home with post-traumatic stress or TBI. Mm. It just makes sense. Uh, after a, more than a decade, of deployments in war. Some of our families have deployed three, four, five, six times. Some in the Air Force who have shorter deployments have deployed up to nine times. Is that the biggest deployment time that you've seen or the largest? I think nine's our record and believe it or not, I believe that was a Marine. Wow, and how long is an actual deployment time? When we hear about deployment, and is it six months, is it a year, is it two years? What does that mean? It, it varies depending on the service. Uh, it can go anywhere from three months, typically for Air Force, or a little bit shorter. Uh, Army can go up to a year, sometimes 16, 18 months. It depends on how they're needed and what they're needed for. So Heather, what I hear you saying is our service members can be on deployment or away from home three months at a time, 
12 months at a time, 16 months at a time, back and forth for up to nine years, depending on what branch of the military you're in. Is that correct. correct? And not just the service member is going through this, but we have a whole generation of children now who've grown up celebrating birthday by Skype. Wow. Growing up thinking that one parent's generally not there. And we, you have dual families too. So you have families where both mom and dad are taking turns deploying. And we have a generation of children that we have no idea how this is going to affect, affect them. them. Wow. Well, Ms. Heather, let's go ahead and switch to the solutions. We've talked about uh, some of the problems and issues our service member have uh, reconnecting with their families. Is it very important for families, uh, military families, to connect? Let's talk about how we do that. Well, with Project Sanctuary, we take them up to the mountains. We are blessed to live here in Colorado mm -hmm. with year-round recreation. And to be able to break that stress cycle, to take a family up to the mountains into a structured therapeutic program for six days, give them the love and support that they need so that they can concentrate on becoming a family again. So on uh, in the military, uh, tell me what new battle buddies means. Well, when you're in the military, your mission is straightforward. Mm -hmm. You know what you're doing. You know that the guys with you have your back. You know exactly where you're going. You come home, it could be a little fuzzy. You don't really remember your place in the family or what's going on. You may not really feel as comfortable as you could. Uh, so we introduced the concept of, hey, your spouse, that's your new battle that's buddy. That's your new battle buddy. She's got your back. But let's get them on the same page, speaking the same lingo. Let's give them a common mission. Well, Heather, why is it important to serve the whole military family, not just the service member? Well, any program out there that's helping military, we believe works. But if you take that service member fishing and he gets tools and support and comes home excited, it's not always reinforced mm -hmm. because the spouse and the kids haven't also gone fishing. So we take the whole family. To give everyone tools. To give everyone tools so that when they come home, even the teenagers get involved. We teach them healthy communication. We teach them uh, how to deal with some issues. Mm -hmm. We give them financial support, financial classes, so that the whole family is speaking the same lingo and they're on the same mission again. Well, how often and how long does the support need to happen for military families. And that's the other big misconception. People think that when they come home, it's over. And research is showing that it takes a military family up to six years before wait, wait. they ask for help. So what I hear you saying is, once a servant service member comes home, it can take them up to six years to even realize they need support? Yeah, they're going to try all the common things like buying a new motorcycle, uh, alcohol, drugs, some things that are not going to work. It takes a typical military family in crisis six years before they reach out and say, okay, we, we've had it. We, we've got to have some help now. How are you guys making a difference in the military? Well, we partner with lots of other organizations. There are lots of great organizations right here in Colorado. Oh. There are lots of wonderful people out there. And I think maybe because we're in Colorado, we have such a strong sense of community. Mm -hmm. We tend to help each other mm -hmm. and work together so that we can better serve our military families. What is your success rate with Project Sanctuary for service member families, service members and their families? Yeah, right now our success rate and for the last seven years, 90% of our participants that come through stay married. Mm. And we have zero suicides. What can people do at home who have loved ones in the military? Um, how can they get them some help to help cope when they come home? What should they do? Well, first I would like to say to them that they're not alone. A lot of times they're at home, they feel like they're alone, nobody will understand, and that's just not true. There are lots of organizations that are ready to help, they just need to reach out. But does it also affect like moms and dads of service members as Absolutely. well, like the extended family? So our definition is a family is up to the service member. We've had service members show up with just their dog because okay. that, was, that was their family. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've had mom and dad who are now caring for a service member. Mm. Uh, we've had service members show up with their battle buddy oh. because that's their family. So family is whoever cares about you. Why do you love working for Project Sanctuary so much? What do you get out of it? Oh, the military families, they signed up to serve. 
They have put their lives on the line, and the family members love these service members and have gone along on this journey. I cannot tell you what an incredible group of people it is to be able to serve. Uh, they're grateful. They're just wonderful people, and I'm, I'm glad to be a small part in the welcoming back into our communities, and if we can help ease that transition, then it's just huge. Well, Heather, we're running short on time as we start to come mm -hmm. to the close of our program. But I just want you to look in that camera over my mm -hmm. shoulder and speak to that service member who might be afraid to reach out or who doesn't think they need any help. Or speak to that mom of a service member or dad of a service member. Um, encourage them to talk uh, to their service member to reach out for support. What should they do? Yeah. Where should they start? They could start anywhere in Colorado, and Colorado has lots of wonderful organizations. There's uh, lots of help out there and lots of wonderful people ready to help.